Now we're going to look at compositions and partitions, uh, which are uh, interesting combinatorial objects uh, that are well studied and well explained by the symbolic method. So uh, composition is a simple idea. You want to know the number of different ways to express n as a sum of positive integers. So 2 could either be 1 plus 1 or 2, 3 could be 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 1 plus 2, or 2 plus 1, or just 3, uh, and, uh, and so forth. There's 8 ways to express 4 as a sum of positive integers, and 16 ways to express 5 as a sum of positive integers. Uh, and again, uh, it's easy to guess the pattern. Uh, there's uh, 2 to the n minus 1 ways to express n as a sum of positive integers. Uh, and that's easy to see uh, with the symbolic method. Uh, we start out by just considering integers as a combinatorial class. So uh, let i be the class of all positive integers. Uh, so it's just like unary. Uh, so we take an atom and, and we give it size 1, so its generating function is z. Uh, if we have 7 of them, uh, then uh, we have uh, z to the 7th. So the uh, generating function for the class of integers is uh, for every integer z to the uh, size of that integer, uh, or uh, if we uh, collect them by n, i sub n z to the n. And what is a positive integer? It's a sequence of at least one atom. Uh, and so uh, from the uh, <coughs> symbolic method, the generating function is z over 1 minus z, uh, so that means that there's one integer for all positive n. Uh, and so that uh, seems like a trivial uh, derivation, but again, uh, <coughs> making these kinds of arguments for things that we uh, understand so well uh, lead us immediately to be able to address more complicated problems uh, with the same basic structure. So now if we look at compositions, uh, what we can do is uh, uh, essentially uh, think of uh, a number as being divided up into uh, smaller uh, pieces just by putting, if we have 12 dots, we can put bars in with the 12 dots, uh, and where, wherever the bars do, we convert back to unary. So uh, this is uh, one composition, 1 plus 3 plus 1 plus 5 plus 2 equals 12. Uh, and if you look at it that way, and again, the generating function uh, uh, in the standard way, uh, then a composition is just a sequence of positive integers. Uh, so a sequence of positive integers uh, is a composition, uh, and, but, and then grouping by n, we just need to find coefficient of z to the n. But sequence of positive integers, the generating function is immediately 1 over 1 minus the generating function for integers, and that one's z over 1 minus z, and if you do the math, you get 1 minus z over 1 minus 2z, uh, for the uh, OGF for compositions. Uh, and then uh, expanding that, uh, it's 2 to the n minus 2 to the n minus 1, or 2 to the n minus 1 different compositions. Uh, so uh, very uh, straightforward to analyze this combinatorial structure uh, with the symbolic method. Uh, uh, you, and you can argue combinatorially uh, if you want. Uh, there's n minus 1 spaces between the n dots, uh, and every one of them could have a bar or not, uh, so that's why there's 2 to the n minus 1 possibilities uh, in terms of number of compositions. Uh, now, what about partitions? What if we don't care about the order? Same way as we did for trees. Uh, so there's uh, three uh, partitions of uh, n integers. Uh, so we'll take the one that goes in decreasing order. Uh, so um, all of these, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 plus 1, and so forth, they all represent the same partition. We'll keep the one whose parts are not increasing. Uh, so anyway, just crossing out the ones that appear more than once, uh, there's seven partitions of five elements. Uh, express n as a sum of unordered uh, positive integers. It's not so obvious uh, what the uh, answer to this one is. Uh, I think uh, you'll look at the, uh, you're not going to find the 2 to the n minus 1 pattern here. Uh, and people have studied this actually quite a bit. Uh, there's a thing known as a Ferrars diagram, which is a 2D representation of the partition where you just put the parts uh, uh, in order, uh, you just turn them on end and make columns out of them. So if you have that partition, 8 plus 8, and so forth, so that's parts are in decreasing order. Uh, if you just turn the dots on end, you get this uh, Ferrars diagram uh, for, of the 42 dots. 
uh, and it's non-increasing, so it's a, a staircase down. The question is, how many different uh, diagrams are there? Uh, this, uh, so the question is, how many Ferrars diagrams are there with n dots? Uh, and again, this seems like a, a toy combinatorial question, uh, but uh, actually uh, it's uh, going to require uh, uh, the symbolic method and also saddle point asymptotics. It's, it's one of the most difficult uh, asymptotic problems uh, we'll run into. Uh, and ev even so, not only that, uh, there's uh, lots of applications where uh, people uh, want to study these things, not just analysis of algorithm, but uh, particle physics, and it's related to Lie algebras and, and representation theory. So you can find these uh, objects studied uh, in uh, physics journals, uh, not just uh, uh, math and computer science journals. Uh, so we can do the symbolic method part uh, right here. Uh, so if we study the class of all partitions, uh, then uh, the examples that we just showed, uh, it's simply the case that a partition is a multiset of positive integers. Uh, so that means that uh, since there's only one integer of e e each kind, uh, just directly from the transfer theorem that the symbolic method gives us, uh, we have uh, that expression for the generating function for uh, the number of partitions. Uh, and uh, to find z to the n of that, again, is quite a challenge. It goes back to Hardy and Ramanujan, uh, and it's asymptotic to e to the pi square root of 2n two, two over 3 over 4n over square root of 3. Uh, and we'll uh, later on uh, uh, touch on that. Uh, but uh, from the present context, uh, we get right to the problem uh, with the symbolic method. And this is representative of uh, a, a huge number of problems where, uh, again, with trees, we uh, express uh, different problems on trees by having different kinds of restrictions on the subtrees. And for these types of problems, you can uh, consider, say, compositions into m parts uh, or uh, restricted compositions where uh, you don't allow all the integers, just some subset of the integers. Uh, and same with partitions. You can do partitions into distinct parts or restricted partitions where uh, you can take, uh, again, any subset of the integers uh, and all different kinds of problems uh, ensue from uh, considering these things. Uh, write down the OGF for compositions into parts uh, where the integers are all less than or equal to R. And we'll look at a couple of other ones. Uh, how many partitions are there into parts that are powers of two? Uh, well, that answer is uh, easy one, and we'll see why in just a second. Uh, just from uh, the symbolic method, uh, it's uh, one plus z times one plus z squared, uh, one plus z to the fourth, and so forth. So we're looking for the coefficient of z to the n in that. Well, if you just multiply the first two terms, uh, that's one plus z plus z squared plus z cubed. And then if you multiply that term by uh, the z to the fourth, you can see the first four terms come, and then z to the fourth uh, times each one of them carries the series through to seven. Uh, and then same for eight, so you can see eventually you just get a uh, sum of one plus z and so forth, uh, which is uh, one over one minus z. Uh, so it's just a number of ways to represent an integer as a sum of powers of two. Uh, uh, there's only one. That's sometimes called the computer scientist theorem. Uh, problems of this type are uh, very well studied. One of the most famous ones is due to polia. It's uh, how many ways are there to change a dollar. Uh, so let's say uh, all you have is quarters. How many ways are there to change the, a dollar? Uh, well, so a dollar is, is 100 cents, and the number of... Uh, uh, ways to represent an integer with quarters as a sum of 25s is 1 over 1 minus z to the 25th. So coefficient of z to the 100 in that is just 1. There's only one z to the 100th term. Uh, so the only way to change a dollar with quarters is 1 with 4 quarters. Uh, so uh, that's fine. Uh, so what if you have dimes, too? Well, it turns out there's three, way to change, three ways to change a dollar with quarters and dimes. Uh, so you can do that by trying to figure out the possibilities, or we can do it with generating functions, too. Uh, so number of ways to change a dollar with quarters and dimes is coefficient z to the 100 and 1 over 1 minus z to the 25th, 1 over 1 minus z to the 10th. 
That's the number of ways to uh, represent an integer uh, as a sum of 25s and 10s. Uh, so uh, if you multiply out uh, those power series uh, then, uh, and look for coefficients of z to the 100, uh, well, you're going to see there's going to be the 1 times a z to the 100th out here. Uh, there'll be two z to the 50th uh, multiplied together, and then there'll be a z to the 100th in this one times that one, so there's three different things. Uh, in fact, what you can do is just throw out the irrelevant terms if you're just looking for the coefficient of z to the 100th, uh, and then you get the three different ways. That's how many different ways to change a dollar with quarters and dimes, either four quarters, two quarters and five dimes, uh, uh, or ten dimes. Uh, so now what if we, uh, so, so that's quarters, quarters and dimes. Uh, what about if we add nickels? Well now if we add nickels, uh, you're going to say, well, I, w I want a computer to do the symbolic uh, analysis. Or what about pennies? Uh, so how many different ways are there to change a dollar with quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies? Uh, and uh, so uh, Polya had a key insight uh, and wrote a paper on this uh, that shows that it's not difficult to calculate this uh, uh, for small values by hand. And it's uh, worth looking at because it uh, illustrates a general phenomenon that very often one thing that we can do with generating functions is use them to get recurrences and then we can compute with the recurrences to at least uh, known numerical values of the things that we're studying. So what Polya uh, pointed out was that if you have uh, a generating function b of z that's equal to another generating function a of z times 1 over 1 minus z to the n, then you multiply both sides by 1 minus z to the n, uh, and you get this following recurrence that b sub n equals b sub n minus m plus a sub n. Uh, so that uh, gives a way to go ahead and compute the, the small values. So, uh, so for this example, we're going to add the nickels and then the dimes uh, and then the quarters. Actually, you could do this in, in other orders too. Uh, so uh, add, uh, and we're only doing, since everything's a multiple of five, uh, we'll only uh, look at the coefficients of z to uh, a power that's a multiple. Uh, so if we want to compute uh, b sub n, uh, so we're going to compute b sub 5, uh, then we take a sub 5 and add uh, b sub 0 to it. Uh, if we want to compute b sub 10, uh, then we take uh, a sub 10 and add b sub 5 to it, and, and so forth. Uh, so for this line, it's easy to figure out what happens. Uh, we just uh, get uh, uh, <coughs> n plus 1. Uh, so now it starts to get more interesting for the next line. Uh, so now uh, if we want to know, uh, <coughs> well we start out with the first two are, are 1, but now uh, if we want to know b sub 15, uh, then we go 10 back. Uh, so that's uh, a sub 15, uh, that is the line below, uh, plus uh, b sub 5. So that gives 4. And then 2 plus 4 is 6, 4 plus 5 is 9. Uh, 6 plus 6 is 12, 9 plus 7 is 16, and so forth. So add each one to the 1, uh, 2 back. Uh, so to get this one, uh, we get 15 plus 49 is 64, uh, and so forth. And we can just fill in that whole line in that way. And then finally, the last line, uh, that uh, to uh, get uh, 25, uh, we just go back to zero and add a sub 25, and then uh, now we can skip five at a time because our goal is just to get to 100. Uh, so 49.72 is 121, and then we have 242 different ways to change a dollar. Uh, so it's a, a, an easy way to do a computation based uh, on the generating function, uh, even though uh, uh, computing this uh, in general uh, might be uh, a bit of a challenge uh, for various different types of restrictions. Uh, and if you want to do an, an exercise, uh, start with this table and say the government switches to 20 cent pieces instead of dimes for some reason, how many ways are there to change a dollar? Uh, and uh, you can uh, run through this computation in the same way. Uh, <coughs> uh, it turns out uh, there's a lot fewer. Uh, so uh, that's uh, Polya's uh, change a dollar problem that uh, uh, is an interesting problem related to compositions and partitions uh, showing how we can use OGFs to uh, address some of these problems.